The final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion Number 15422 in the name of Fiona MacLeod on Fair Trade Fortnight. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could please press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Fiona MacLeod to open the debate. Seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and uh, thank you to all the members who signed my motion to allow this to come before Parliament in what, of course, will be my last members' debate. Uh, and I think it's quite fitting that it's on Fair Trade. Fair Trade fortnight, 23rd of February to the 13th of March, is something that uh, I have worked on in Parliament and also in my constituency over my years in Parliament. This year's Fair Trade fortnight is... Uh, the tagline is sit down for breakfast, stand up for farmers, which I think is a really important message to send out across the world. Sit down for breakfast. It chimes with this government's uh, belief in having a healthy lifestyle. So we start this day right with a healthy breakfast. But I love the fact that you can, it encompasses having a healthy breakfast with a healthy respect for farmers around the world. Scotland, of course, has a great reputation in fair trade, one of the first fair trade nations in 2013. I think eight, a, a vast majority of our local authorities have now achieved fair trade status. My own, Eastern Bartonshire, achieved that status in 2007. And there are in, in numerous towns and villages around Scotland who have achieved fair trade status. I've been doing a lot of uh, travelling around the country in the last couple of months and it's just wonderful as you drive into a town or a village to see their, their name emblazoned but with pride the fair trade status uh, symbol underneath the name of their town. Of course in my constituency that would include Lenzie and Bearsden and Mogai. And what also is amazing about the way that Scotland has approached fair trade is that we've done it as a community and we've done it across generations. So schools can achieve fair trade status. Churches were amongst the first uh, to get involved in the fair trade uh, um, regime. And in my constituency, there are eight schools who have achieved fair trade status. I think I've said my constituency now about three times, presiding officer. Um, and I'm not going to stop saying it because I've only got three weeks left to do that. I think we'll indulge you. <laughs> thank you very much, presiding officer, because three weeks, in three weeks' time at midnight, I cease to be the MSP for Strathkelvin and Bears Den. So perhaps this is an opportunity, if you will indulge me, where I can say thank you to my constituents for supporting me over the last five years. There's something very special about representing the constituency that you've lived in all your days because it's representing your neighbours, representing your family and representing your friends. And it has been a great privilege for me to be able to do that since 2011. So my constituency of Strathkelvin and Bears Den has a large number of events going on over Fair Trade Fortnight. And I'd like to just mention a couple of them. Last weekend on the 28th of February, Lenzie held, held its big breakfast. I think this is the third or fourth year in a row that Lenzi as a fair trade town has done that. Thankfully this year they didn't ask me to judge the cakes. Because <laughs> if I can tell you, my, my friends will know I'm not averse to a nice bit of cake, but when you're faced with 30 cakes before 10 o'clock in the morning, it starts off feeling great and it ends up, mm, um, <laughs> and I always felt really sorry for the folk I was judging at the end because I'm sure I wasn't judging them to the same standard. So this year they had a colouring competition instead, much more sensible. Um, and also in, uh, in one of my local super supermarkets, uh, Bears Den and Mogai Fair Trade held a stall in, uh, in the foyer of the supermarket it's a, a supermarket that already stocks fair trade, sells it, but this was an opportunity as folk came through the door for Bears Den and Mogai Fair Trade Group to actually highlight the work that the supermarket was doing, but most importantly, the work that fair trade does to support farmers and producers all around the world. And of course, I can't possibly not mention Balmore Coach House in my constituency, set up over 25 years ago, long before I think most folk understood what fair trade was. 
But Balmore Coach House set up all those years ago and has raised over a million pounds through selling fair trade goods. That's a million pounds raised in my constituency, but invested. <laughs> Thank you. But more importantly, a million pounds invested back in to the farmers and the workers around the world to give them a decent wage for a decent day's work. And there are other initiatives across my constituency where we've been quite tra uh, trailblazers. Fair trade nurseries. I think in the last couple of years we've begun to take that for granted. We've seen the fair trade flags outside our primary schools and we're increasingly hearing about fair trade nurseries. Well, those were piloted in Eastern Bartonshire and it was the success of them that went on to see them throughout Scotland. And another area piloted in Eastern Bartonshire in 2010 were school uniforms. School uniforms from fairly traded cotton. And, um, you know, the, the work that some of my constituents have done on that, and I have talked about it before in Parliament, has led to, <coughs> I think, a really important, and it's back to what I was talking about earlier, about it being across generations. When you go to school, at primary school, and you, right down to the very basics of your uniform comes with a fair trade label on it, that means our youngest children are talking about what does fair trade mean? And I think for them, <coughs> in terms of school uniforms and the fair trade footballs that we have. And I also remember the day that I made a minister and the Labour Party stood up and of course, you made a minister on your own, you're the one that gets all the abuse. They don't single one person out. I got no abuse and the Labour Party actually commented on the fact that just the week before I'd been at a fair trade event for fair trade footballs. So I've kind of gone off at a tangent there, but. For our young people to go to school and find their uniform as a fair trade label on it, to play football and find their football has a fair trade label on it, I think is really important because one of the things that they learn at the earliest age is no matter how much we talk about injustice and inequalities in Scotland, the fact that our young people know that when they're wearing their school uniform and they're playing their football, these have not been made by child labour in other parts of the world, I think is a very important lesson for our young folk to learn. And that's not in any way negating health, it, it, the inequalities that there are in Scotland, but it puts it in perspective for a lot of our young folk about just how awful life can be for young people around the world. And perhaps the last thing um, I want to mention is taking part in the, the procurement mm -hmm. bill debate in the parliament and actually wondering this isn't really my subject. Why am I talking about the procurement debate? Because it was important that in that discussion about the procurement bill and in our resultant act, we talked about ethical procurement, about fairly traded procurement. And perhaps that's one of the best examples of how this parliament and this government understands that by fair trade and fairly trading, we can actually make sure that everything we do is with respect, not just here in Scotland, but around the world. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you, and I hope you feel that you were suitably indulged, not just because part of your constituency used to be in mine before the boundary changes. Um, we now turn to the open debate. Speeches of around four minutes or so, and I call Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Liam McCarthy. Presiding officer, I welcome this debate on encouraging fair trade in Scotland and uh, congratulate Fiona McLeod on introducing it and join her in congratulating all the individuals and businesses who have endeavoured to support farmers and producers uh, across the world and endorse the fair trade ethos. This involves, of course, ensuring that the process of producing goods protects workers' conditions and that the trade of those goods preserves their environment and supports them financially. In 2006, the uh, then Scottish Executive, as it was called, and the Welsh Assembly Government collaboratively agreed criteria for fair trade nation status. The criteria required that we achieve a range of nationwide targets set by the then Scottish Executive. These include encouraging the take-up of fair trade groups in local authorities and in higher education institutions, achieving fair trade status in our cities, and promoting fair trade products as a natural choice for all consumers. 
They also required a commitment from this Parliament to make annual statements in support of fair trade as a principle, marking fair trade fortnight each year and encouraging faith groups, schools, trade unions and business networks to pledge their support. The conclusion of the 2012 report that measured progress in Scotland against these criteria states that, and I quote, the evidence submitted demonstrates in the opinion of the forum that Scotland has now met the criteria agreed between the Welsh Assembly Government and the Scottish Executive in 2006 and can therefore declare itself a fair trade nation. This is certainly something to celebrate and to encourage members here to continue to raise awareness in our own constituencies of the availability of fair trade options. In my local constituency, we have the excellent Golden Acre Fair Trade, which runs a regular stall at St. Serf's Church in Ferry Road, a stall that in the tradecraft top seller category has been there for three years in a row. They also accept food donations to be distributed to the tenants and residents in Muir House Group, who run a community shop and food bank in a neighboring community. So their purpose in North Edinburgh is to provide high quality and fresh products to the community, promote the fair trade ethos and give crucial support to low income families in, their own, in the area, in the constituency. Their tireless work was recognised in 2015 with accolades at the Lord Provost Fair Trade Awards, an annual award now in its 10th year, which recognises the difference that residents, businesses and schools make in promoting fair trade in Edinburgh. The award categories included fair trade achievement and fair trade faith community. This debate falls in a week of awareness campaigns that look to highlight the difficulties faced by farmers across the world in an increasingly competitive global market and seek to show how local solutions can provide an answer to global problems. The Sit Down for Breakfast Stand Up for Farmers initiative draws public attention to the many millions of farmers and workers in developing countries who strive to produce our food, but live with uncertainty as to where their own next meal is coming. This is a week where businesses can improve their fair trade credentials by highlighting through social media their own achievements in promoting products and their commitment to the fair trade ethos in the long term. Campaigners and businesses up and down the country will hold hundreds of breakfast events as part of Fair Trade Fortnight 2016. With the You Eat, They Eat hashtag, used to spread the word on social media. The Fair Trade Foundation know that consumers value businesses that place the ethics of fair trade, social responsibility and the well-being of farmers and workers as a central feature of their activities. By doing so, they demonstrate that profit can and should work to the benefit of all and there should be no room for exploitation. According to the Fair Trade Foundation report uh, of 2013, half of the world's hungry people, nearly 400 million, are estimated to live on small farms. Without the protection of fair pay and conditions, these farmers struggle to eat. We can play a small part in changing their circumstances simply by making a different consumer choice. So if we have the means to do it, we should buy fair trade and use the pound in our pockets to improve the well-being of millions throughout the world. Thank you. Now call Liam MacArthur to be followed by George Adam. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I also uh, thank Fiona MacLeod for bringing the debate, acknowledging uh, her uh, long-standing commitment to the issue of, of fair trade and congratulate her on making this debate possible. I, th I think on the subject of congratulations, if I could draw on another uh, lifelong passion of uh, Fiona MacLeod to make her aware that Stuart Bain of Orkney Library was voted Librarian of the, uh, of the Year, uh, I'm sure she will join me in con uh, offering our congratulations. I participated in a similar debate I think, two years ago. Uh, George Adam uh, led it. Uh, at that stage, we were looking forward to Scotland achieving fair, na uh, fair trade nation uh, status. This year, as uh, Fiona MacLeod indicated, the theme is uh, sit down for breakfast, stand up for farmers. I'm tempted, given the mess that's being made with cap payments at the moment, uh, to point out that perhaps some of the farmers and crofters locally uh, are making much the same plea. I was sorry, however, that um, Fiona MacLeod and I were unable to organise a fair trade breakfast. Um, it is the most important meal of the day, and I think it probably would have helped me uh, get through the uh, corporate body meeting uh, that I had uh, this morning. Uh, but I think as other speakers have indicated, this is a movement that's going from strength to strength right across Scotland. And I think, um, like previous speakers, I will perhaps draw on some of the examples of that in my own Orkney constituency. 
in relation to uh, Westry and Papa Westry, um, they've been in the vanguard. I think I had the privilege uh, of helping them launch their bid for fair trade island status shortly after my election in 2007. Uh, on that occasion, the genuine enthusiasm right across the community for the endeavour uh, at all ages uh, was very, very evident. And epit uh, epitomising that, perhaps, has been the progress made by Westry Chutney. Anne Rendell is now, I think, the first Orkney fair trade food producer. Um, she's gained fair trade accreditation uh, for most of uh, the range of her products. Uh, and I think this is a, a real achievement and shows genuine commitment. It's no surprise, perhaps, therefore, that Westry Junior High School uh, reached fair achiever status, uh, I think, in time with the, the last debate uh, that I participated in. This was, at that stage, the highest award possible for schools since when they've won the Margaret uh, Demondeca Award, uh, which is the UK award for the best fair trade school initiative. Uh, not to be outdone, pupils at Kirkwall Grammar School, another fair trade school in my constituency, have also been busy. Theo Awemi remains the driving force at KGS. Um, last week, uh, they were uh, able to host a visit by Pamela Intelligent, uh, along with uh, the local primary schools, Gleitness and Pabdale Primary. Pamela uh, Intelligent was able to spend time with uh, pupils. Um, and she is uh, one of the many remarkable women uh, involved in the fair trade movement. She started work at 13 in a sweatshop in Mauritius. She learned English by listening to BBC uh, World Service and had never been out of Mauritius uh, before coming to Scotland uh, last year for fair trade uh, fortnight. Um, but her, I'm absolutely convinced that her engagement with uh, the young people in Orkney will have had a real and lasting impact uh, on them and their commitment to fair trade in the years ahead. This commitment goes um, far wider in Orkney. I think it's um, worth putting on record the efforts of the Northlink Ferries staff uh, who've been using fair trade and local goods as part of their hospitality offering. The staff, I understand, are wearing Cool Schools fair trade cotton polo shirts uh, and they're hosting a ferry to a fair trade future on the 10th of March. All very commendable uh, endeavours in terms of spreading the word. I think I would also wish to pay tribute to Orkney Islands Council for the role that they've played in bringing together what is a genuinely community effort. Pamela Intelligent claims that fair trade changed her life. Uh, according to Theo Wemi, um, it's putting schools at the heart of the movement for change. It's great for young people because it's fun and is part of something happening all over the world. And it's great for farmers who are earning a fair price and feeling the support of people on the other side of the world. So can I thank Fiona McLeod again? Um, I don't know whether that's her, her final speech, but um, I, I certainly uh, welcome her efforts on, on this issue as well as uh, other issues uh, in which we hear a common interest. Can I thank all those involved in events in Orkney and across uh, Scotland and wish the movement and those it supports continued success in the future. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call George Adam to be followed by Jamie McGregor. Thank you, President Officer, and can I too thank Fiona McLeod for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Uh, I was the cross-party group on the Fair Trade uh, convener for a number of years, and I led this debate. I was thinking, President Officer, just before when we had a full house at Fiona's speech, Fiona McLeod's speech, I was wondering where they all were for these four years where I led the debate. But I'm taking it entirely personally, and uh, uh, we'll kind of take it up with them at a later date. But uh, if I could talk for a moment about Fiona, obviously this is a, a very important kind of issue to her as well. But I've known Fiona uh, McLeod for a very, very long time. And she's been like a, a mother figure to me in this parliament. And I mean that in the best ways, not in any negative. We've known each other. She scalded me when I've needed scalded. She's uh, made me feel better when I've needed uh, a, a shoulder to cry on. So she's been very... And I, if I should be lucky enough to represent the good people of Paisley uh, after May, then she'll be someone I will dearly miss in this chamber uh, when that time comes. But Mr Adam, have you heard the adage about stopping digging? <laughs> But uh, if I could possibly start talking about fair trade again, obviously it's uh, an extremely important uh, couple of weeks when we have fair trade fortnight. It's uh, the time when we get absolutely everything, uh, the focus for everybody that's involved in the movement in Scotland to get it together. When we became a fair trade nation, it was actually during that fortnight that we managed to announce everything. And uh, it was interesting because when you look at how it's all worked, it's all fair trade in Scotland has effectively moved on from uh, churches, the churches and 
various uh, religious organisations doing things out the back of cars, selling goods out of uh, various fets and things like that. And we now have a situation where there are shops uh, that specialise in it and there are also uh, the, kind of the mainstream shops dealing with the actual goods as well. And that's incredible in my lifetime when you've seen that change. But one of the things that focuses on this week, which has already been mentioned these couple of weeks, is sit down for breakfast, stand up for farmers. And I was listening to Fiona McLeod when she actually said about, you know, good, healthy breakfast. Well, I watched my wife, Stacey, read that, eat that fair trade banana fritter thing this morning. And I don't think, presiding officer, that's precisely healthy. It may be very good for the people who are trading in the goods that are there, but I don't think it was a healthy breakfast. But she's going to do her bit for fair trade fortnight and probably eat it as often as she possibly can you know but uh, one of the things that the fair trade uh, uh, foundation have actually said on their website they've used a martin luther king quote when they talk about this is before you finish eating breakfast in the morning you've depended on more than half the world and i think that uh, as always, Martin Luther King's managed to kind of summarise everything in a, a nice, very easy line for us all to all these decades later to requote, because it tells us that there's these there's people all over the world who are in a situation where it is absolutely terrible the way but large businesses have been working with them and the conditions they've had to deal with, and the fact that fair trade, the premium, offers these. Uh, people and individuals the chance to rebuild their communities, to bring education. You know, and some of the people we talked in my time as CPG uh, convener were talking to women, uh, women's organisations where the women weren't encouraged to be educated. But they had, through the fair trade premium, managed to set up schools and make sure not only were they educated, but they also had the opportunity of having a trade and actually uh, being able to uh, trade their goods in a fair manner. Now, I think that's what a very basic level that's what fair trade is all about it's about us as a nation yes it's great being scotland being a fair trade nation but it's what we actually do with that it's what we do as a fair trade nation and how we deal with that we're telling the world that we won't stand back and actually allow big business to actually dictate what they want to do and a perfect example is when you talk about footballs and sporting goods classic example presiding officer because of the sponsorship of major sporting organizations it automatically makes these products look cool look better with an 80 pound pair of trainers i'm probably talking 1980s prices here actually but an 80 pound pound of trainers is actually only made for about 20 pound or 10 pound or something like that you know, these are the kind of things that are wrong and morally wrong. And we have to make sure that we get to a stage that we encourage everyone else to look at this closely when there's these major sporting events. I know the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow were a fairly traded event. And I think we have to look at that as well, because I think sporting endeavours and the sports organisations are the way forward to take this to the next stage. So can I thank uh, Fiona McLeod for bringing this and everything she's helped me with over the years and support and guidance. I know I've not been easy to work with and deal with, but you've been an absolute saint. But uh, Liam MacArthur says, here, here. Uh, but uh, one of the things I'd like to say is this is about our place in the world and Scotland actually showing to the world that we want to be part and we want to make a difference in people's life. And it's part of who we are. Thank you very much. And I now call Jamie McGregor. Uh, thank you very much. Well, I would like to start by congratulating Fiona MacLeod on a, a very good parliamentary career and also on securing time in the parliament for this debate. Um, governments around the world are looking to trade as a driver of economic growth and poverty reduction. Trade is central to the Sustainable Development Goals, which is the new global po poverty reduction and sustainability framework that has been adopted. And we're all aware of the fact that trade can be somewhat of a blunt tool that can harm as well as help um, poverty reduction. We must ensure that the policies of our governments, be that local, Scottish or UK level, join up with these girls in order not to undermine the needs of the poorest in our world. Otherwise, it can be a case of giving with one hand and taking away with the other. But trade brings something potentially even more important than poverty reduction. It empowers people, encourages entrepreneurs to start a small holding, take control over their own lives. By ensuring that these farmers, many in the least developed countries in our world, can produce and sell their goods to fair and decent standards, we also give them a better chance in life and these farmers are usually members of cooperatives with their own elected representatives, which facilitates decision-making when it comes to how profits are spent. This system has had tangible benefits for small-scale farmers, and profits raised have often contributed to building schools, 
roads, other structural improvements which have been identified as prioritized by the community, including, of course, new water wells and irrigation. I might say if fair trade products often taste better, uh, I refer particularly to those small, by uh, the bunches of small yellow bananas you get in cellophane uh, bags, which always seem to be better than the other ones. I don't know why. Um, I, uh, the effects of fair trade practices are clear for all to see, and there are now 1,210 fair trade certified producer organizations in 74 countries worldwide, over 1.5 million farmers and workers in fair trade certified producer organizations. Scotland's contribution to this effort is very notable. But in order to be recognized as a fair trade nation, Scotland had to meet a number of criteria to demonstrate that people had sufficient knowledge and interest in fair trade. As part of this process, found that 100% of counties and local authority areas have active fair trade groups working towards fair trade status, with at least 55% of local authority and all cities achieving fair trade state status. My region of Highlands and Lions is a fair trade zone. My local town of Oban became a fair trade town in 2006. As a fair trade nation, Scotland has been a key contributor, which has helped maintain momentum to the cause. The Scottish Fair Trade Forum has been a crucial factor in engaging businesses and suppliers across Scotland in embracing the principles of fair trade. And I'm pleased to see that the West Coast Delhi in Alapu is amongst a four-page list of um, trade suppliers in fair trade, which goes on to Marks and Spencer in Inverness, for example. Uh, this issue is not a situation which should be taken for granted, however. Too often, many of the farmers who supply necessities such as food and clothing for consumers the basic needs we've come to take for granted are left without them themselves, those very same items. So the producers are, fast, are sometimes forced to work for genuinely exploitive employers without the essential employment or indeed human rights that we have been accustomed to in the Western world. Fair trade fundamentally provides vital protection and support for these producers, and producers have even gone so far as to say that farming would be impossible without it. Fair trade does exactly what the name suggests. It's about making trade fair and ensuring decent working conditions and wages. This in turn leads to individuals having more control over their own lives and gives them dignity and respect. Every member of this parliament, every member of the public, and every consumer worldwide has the opportunity to contribute to the effort by adapting their everyday choices. And I hope very much that they will continue to do so. Thank you. Many thanks. And can I now invite Hamza Youssef to respond to the debate minister, seven minutes or so. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, my thanks to Fiona McLeod for bringing this uh, debate and this motion forward. Uh, I know she's not one that likes praise, but nonetheless, I hope she will indulge us because uh, it is her last members' debate, not her last speech. I'm sure she'll make some contributions in the next few weeks, but certainly her last uh, members' debate, and I would just like to concur with what George Adam said uh, in terms of uh, what a great example you've been uh, to particularly first-timers uh, in this parliament, like myself, uh, and particularly for those who seek to represent a constituency that if we were uh, half as good at uh, doing that and, and mentioning our constituency and looking after our constituency's interest, uh, then we'd be doing not a bad job uh, in the slightest. So well done for being at the forefront of this issue uh, to Fiona McLeod, but thank you uh, also for setting a very good example, as I say, for some of the first-timers uh, like myself uh, as well. In terms of the actual issue that uh, Fiona McLeod has brought forward, uh, just to put it into some context, Deputy Presiding Officer, uh, we still suffer, uh, and people still suffer, a huge amount of poverty that sometimes we can forget about. Of course, we have poverty uh, in Scotland, and many of us will see that in and around our constituencies. Uh, but the type of poverty I'm talking about here, the absolute abject poverty, uh, that is still faced by one third of the world. Two billion people still live under two dollars a day, on two on less than two dollars a day. I mean, unbelievable. A third of uh, the entire human race uh, under two dollars uh, a day, and almost unimaginable how people uh, make a living or make a life uh, out of such uh, small amounts. Uh, but of course, as we know, and as we have seen from many reports, particularly from Oxfam, uh, there is plenty of wealth around the world uh, to compensate for that. Uh, in terms of uh, fair trade, uh, it also fits very much into our ambitions, as the First Minister highlighted 
uh, in summer of last year uh, in terms of the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals or the Global Goals. Uh, they're not just applicable to the developing world, but applicable here uh, in Scotland too. And the First Minister was resolute in saying that uh, we have to uh, make sure that we follow through and we implement them uh, here in Scotland. Fair trade is very much a part uh, and parcel of, of that. Um, we are, as many members have mentioned, uh, one of only two fair trade uh, nations in the world. And as again, uh, many members, including latterly Jamie McGregor, mentioned that was not done through a simple tick box exercise, but very uh, robust uh, and actually quite challenging criteria had to be met in order to fulfil uh, that uh, and, 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 and achieve that status. Uh, many uh, members here have also mentioned the uh, theme of this year's Fair Trade Fortnight sit down for breakfast stand up uh, for farmers. I had the great pleasure of being at the launch of the schools event uh, for Fair Trade Fortnight in um, Govan's Pierce Institute, uh, joined by many schools from up and down the country actually uh, that were there. Uh, to celebrate and uh, launch Fair Trade Fortnight. And schools and young people are definitely the key to the Fair Trade movement uh, and to ensure the, the flame of the Fair Trade movement continues to burn uh, very brightly uh, indeed. There are 1,000 schools in Scotland that are part of the Fair Trade School Scheme. Uh, 400, of those sc 400 schools already have Fair Trade uh, status. It's amazing when I spoke to uh, the primary school children and high school children that were there, uh, the amount of schools that now have a fair trade society, a fair trade club, uh, fair trade stalls, a fair trade tuck shop uh, is incredible. Uh, and their understanding of fair trade and why it's important is much greater than when I was in school. When I was in school, uh, you know, not even that long ago necessarily, I didn't know much about fair trade. It was hardly mentioned uh, at all when I was growing up in school. But now every single, uh, or so many schools, and then a lot of our children seem to know about uh, the value of fair trade and why it's uh, such an important thing to be involved in. And why is it important? Well, uh, it's important for a number of reasons. Uh, it's important that our children know about it because they're often the ones that are challenging the attitudes of adults. So I spoke to a father who was there uh, with his daughter. Um, she was picking up an award for the work that she'd done uh, on fair trade. And uh, he said to me, when they go shopping, it's the daughter who says, pick that uh, bag of rice or pick up that tea bag or those tea bags or pick up that chocolate as often is the case uh, because they're fair trade products as opposed to some of the other ones so the children very much shaping the attitudes of adults and that's why uh, the fair trade uh, getting young people into the fair trade movement is important um, uh, and, and uh, secondly uh, this really is about fairness for children although we're standing up for farmers uh, the, the reason, and I've spoken, spoken to many farmers who are part of fair trade schemes, uh, the farmers, it's not, they don't want fair trade simply because uh, they want, they're, they're greedy or they want more money uh, at all, or actually just because inherently it's fair, although that is a very respectable reason to back fair trade. Uh, they want it because of their children. Every single farmer I spoke to always mentioned their children's education. Uh, and when I was in Malawi, they said we want it because we want to send our children to school, we have to pay school fees, have to pay for jotters, have to pay for uniforms have to pay for X, Y, Z. It was always, always, always about the children. Um, so yes, we should support fair trade because it's a fair thing to do. Uh, but also the children, the connection between, you know, children here understanding fair trade, uh, meaning that children get an education in some of the, the most uh, underdeveloped parts of the world, I think is an important connection that sometimes we can lose uh, sight of. In terms of the Scottish Government, we're very pleased to support a number of uh, fair trade uh, products, uh, not just the usual. Uh, we hear about chocolate often, we hear about coffee often, we hear about bananas. Uh, often as well. I'm, I'm delighted that uh, through International Development Fund uh, we've supported Just Trading Scotland, an organisation uh, that I know uh, many members here, particularly George Adam, uh, has been quite involved in, but many, many members here uh, have promoted. Uh, they have uh, rice, kill and rice from northern Malawi. Uh, they've had this rice challenge, 90 kg uh, rice challenge, which asks schools and colleges and others uh, to ask uh, groups to sell 90 kgs of rice. Uh, that's the amount that a Malawian rice farmer uh, would need to sell, to allow him or her uh, to send a child to secondary school for one year. Uh, and Just Trading Scotland have recently rebranded their product. It looks great, uh, and it's in some uh, retail shops up and down uh, the country, which is great. So not only do you have uh, new food products, you also have non-food products. Bala Footballs, uh, the fair trade football company, uh, now started to make inroads. Uh, their footballs uh, more readily available. Uh, Jamie Hepburn, uh, Minister for, for Sport and Mental Health, he was... Uh, he and I uh, launched the Walking Football uh, Network, 
and uh, we used uh, Bama Fair Trade uh, footballs just the other week. Uh, so, uh, presiding officer, just to, to, to end, there's uh, many reasons to support uh, fair trade, the inherent fairness, uh, most definitely, uh, but actually just creating a, a better and fairer society, not just for those farmers that, do, that, are, that are there today, uh, but clearly the next generation of farmers, the next generation uh, of adults uh, in the developing world. It would be, uh, it's one of the easiest things for us to do, to change our habits, our shopping habits, uh, uh, and I think uh, the consequences of that uh, are certainly uh, far-reaching. Uh, so we're delighted uh, from the Scottish Government to support uh, Fiona McLeod's motion. I'm delighted that she's brought it forward. And I would encourage everybody uh, listening, everybody watching, and of course members here in the debating chamber to continue to buy fair trade products for the betterment of our society and the betterment of a fairer world. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister, and thanks to all members who stayed and participated in this evening's debate. That concludes Fiona McLeod's last uh, members' debate, which was on the subject of fair trade fortnight. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.